At any sports meeting, we take it for granted that we can measure the time of a race very accurately, probably to a hundredth of a second. We also take it for granted that clocks are very precise, particularly these here that are synchronised via a radio signal to an atomic clock. We associate time with the change of the day, and that's where the original definition of a second came. It was historically defined as 1 over 86,400th of a day, that is 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours. But for high precision, there is a problem with that. And the problem is that the Earth's rotation varies very slightly. And furthermore, that over time it is slowing down ever so slightly. However, it's only been in the last hundred years that we've been able to appreciate this. The old pendulum clocks were nothing like accurate enough to appreciate these variations, and neither were mechanical clocks. Highly accurate quartz clocks, which were invented nearly a hundred years ago, have only become commonplace in the last 50. This uses an electronic oscillator. The crystal oscillator produces a signal with a frequency so precise that quartz clocks are vastly more accurate than any mechanical clock. And finally, this brings us on to atomic clocks which are the basis of the latest definition of a second. This works by measuring the oscillations of charge between two slightly separated energy levels within an atom. This Swiss machine has an uncertainty in its accuracy of only one second in 30 million years. And so, for a less than memorable precise definition, one second is the time taken for 9 billion 192,631,770 cycles of radiation produced from the unperturbed ground state hyperfine transition frequency of the atom cesium-133. A definition only really necessary for those who need to be fantastically precise. But we need to remember that the second is a base unit. It defines, for example, speed and acceleration, frequency, power, and radioactivity. Thank you for watching.